So I got a really great question from one of my Patreon members last week. He said, one thing I struggle with is applying this to learning songs and solos instead of only exercises. Any tips for finding a tempo and subdivision of notes in a solo to then begin slowing down and working up to? A lot of tabs I find of solos I like have incorrect tempo or subdivision of time, eighth notes, 16th notes, etc. This is a great question and something that I regularly go over with a lot of my students and why the thumbnail of this video depicts that sometimes learning a John Petrucci guitar solo is actually easier than learning a Jimmy Page guitar solo. So what I mean by that is that it comes down to how the music is supposed to be played and how it was intended to be played and written in the first place. A piece from John Petrucci or a guitar player like him is most often intended to be played perfectly. John Petrucci is slowing it right down he's playing it with a metronome every single note counts everything is perfectly executed with a guitar player like Jimmy Page and a lot of the classic rock guys it's very loose it's not intended to be played flawlessly perfectly every single time more often than not the performance itself was improvised in the studio and that's why if you watch live performances the solo is totally different every single time so that can make it extremely challenging to then go try and learn note for note perfectly a solo that wasn't intended to be played that way in the first place. So with a solo like that, you, at least in my approach, my opinion is you really want to try to get it to like 70, 80% accuracy and then have the, the feel and the natural, you know, flow of it for that final 20% that you kind of feel your way through it. A piece from Dream Theater or John Petrucci is not meant to be played that way. It is meant to be played perfectly and you slow it down, you get it exact. It's, you know, groups of 16th notes or sextuplets or whatever it is and you practice it perfectly flawlessly. I've gotten some pretty surprised reactions from students, especially when they're newer to my lessons, and I'm throwing a Paul Gilbert riff or a Dream Theater riff at them in the first few lessons, and they're thinking, oh, this is going to be some pretty crazy stuff, but it's actually great because it works as an exercise for whatever technique you're trying to build up. Usually the rhythm is, you know, perfectly in time. You can slow it right down and treat it as an exercise to build up your technique, and then obviously it sounds really cool because it's Paul Gilbert or John Petrucci, and they make six sounding riffs. So as an example of this, if we look at one of John Petrucci's most epic guitar solos, Under a Glass Moon, which is regarded as one of his craziest solos as well, there's actually lots of sequences and phrases within the solo that are great to slow down and work on as exercises. If you take a look at the tabs, you'll see that some of these phrases are, you know, perfect 16th notes, groups of 16th notes, or perfect sextuplets, groups of six notes per beat. And that's stuff that you can slow right down with a metric and practice slowly, flawlessly, perfectly, try to get it in time as much as you can, get it as perfectly played. So if we take this one phrase from Under a Glass Moon, it's perfect 16th notes, and starting one 16th note before the beat, and I'll show you in a second exactly how to play that. But with a piece like this, you can slow it down. <laughs> And at that slower tempo, it still makes sense. It still kind of sounds like the solo and you kind of understand where you are in the piece. So it still works when you slow it down. So just a quick side note with this sequence that really helps a lot of my students uh, kind of approach rhythms this way. As I said, this sequence is starting with a 16th note before the beat. So how you want to approach that with your picking is I'm kind of thinking if I'm picking 16th notes for 16th notes, I'm going to be picking those down, up, down, up every single time. So since I'm starting with one single 16th note before the beat, kind of like one left over from the previous beat, I will start that note on an upstroke so that I'm starting the next note on a downstroke on the beat. So I'm feeling the beat on that 16th fret, not the 12th fret. So just at the beginning there, What I don't want to do is go 
starting that 12 on a downstroke on the beat, the whole thing is going to be a 16th note late if I do that. So it's great practice to just try to, you know, make sure you're starting sequences the correct way and the correct picking way. If we take a look at one of my favorite guitar solos, probably one of my top three favorite guitar solos of all time, Since I've Been Loving You by Led Zeppelin. If we take a look at that intro phrase to the solo, you can hear how, you know, loosely played it is and how it's not perfectly in time and not, you know, perfect subdivisions the entire time. I'm honestly not even going to attempt to try to play this slow to a metronome because first of all I would never approach it that way when learning it and I don't think I can do it. it. It would just be, it would not make sense and it would seem sporadic and it wouldn't even sound like the solo surprisingly if you were to do that. It would also give you a massive headache of trying to decipher all these rhythms and subdivisions to a slow beat. So my advice when learning solos is to approach the music like the artist approached the music. If they were kind of improvising and just going for it and it's loose and it's just in the moment you kind of have to approach learning it that way and it probably will sound more true to the original if you get it about 80 percent accurate and then put the final 20 percent in your own feel and your own you know flow and rhythm and you know nuances but if you're learning a more precise piece you know scarified by paul gilbert or racer x or a dream theater piece again some of my favorites to actually use to teach because it is meant to be played perfectly every note counts you can slow it right down and execute it you know flawlessly uh, unlike a lot of those classic rock solos it's not actually meant to be played flawlessly so once again thanks to Robert for the amazing question on my patreon page on patreon you can always reach out to me ask advice request lesson content and ask me uh, questions with your guitar playing I always respond to everyone on patreon and make tailored lesson videos to the questions that I receive so you can check it out at the link below. Hopefully you guys have found this helpful and keep up the practice.